You haven't been out here for long, have you? Let me explain how stones work, Sonny. Stones need a very special environment to form. The principle behind every renal stone is supersaturation, in which the amount of material being filtered into the urine exceeds its solubility and starts to precipitate. Just look at the dried up riverbed here. See all the salts getting all saturated down there? This is why increasing urine volume and diluting those solutes by maintaining adequate hydration is a cornerstone in the treatment of all types of stones. Oftentimes, it's going to be the best way to prevent those stones from forming, not changing diet or starting a medication. All you need to do is drink more water. The next thing to keep in mind is that there are four major types of stones, calcium, magnesium ammonium phosphate, uric acid, and cysteine. Far and away, the most common type of renal stones, and the stars of this video, are those of the calcium variety, dominating an 80% share of the renal stone market. Within this group is the much more common calcium oxalate stone and the much less common, except for in children, calcium phosphate stone. Let's start with calcium oxalate. See old Bessie over here? She's a dairy cow, a prized commodity on the American frontier. Anytime you see her milk in this scene, it's going to represent calcium. And oxalate? An organic dye anion found mostly in plant foods that's capable of forming complexes with various physiologic cations. Oxalate will be embodied by, you guessed it, an ox. Normally, Bessie and the ox leave each other alone. They both enter the renal tubule, which in this scene will be represented by the dry riverbed. Once inside, they stay ionized in solution and get excreted. That was painless. For the remainder of this sketch, however, we're going to see what we can do to make them precipitate out of solution and form a stone. Like we mentioned earlier, all you need is dehydration. The dissolved calcium oxalate salt gets super saturated and precipitates. It's that simple. So remember, tell your patient to stay hydrated. What else can we do though? It turns out that the calcium oxalate balance is important too. And as you'll soon see, you only need one to be out of whack in order to precipitate a stone. If you dump too much calcium into the tubule, which will be illustrated by a waterfall of calcium milk entering the riverbed, whoop, out pops a calcium oxalate stone. Or what if you overload the tubule with oxalate, sending a stampede of those oxen into the riverbed? Stone. Let's start with Bessie here, because in at least 50% of patients who develop calcium oxalate stones, the problem is hypercalciuria. That is, they secrete an abnormally high amount of calcium into the renal tubule. So where is all this calcium coming from? It's easy to imagine that if a patient is hypercalcemic, that is, they have too much calcium in their blood, then they'll have to excrete more calcium and oversaturate the tubule. But here's the weird thing. Most patients have completely normal serum calcium levels. See this guy here? Taking a break from the arduous labor of repeatedly dipping a pan in water while looking for shiny things? Take a close look at that milk bucket he's bringing back to camp. It's filled right to the normal line, representing normal calcemia or normal serum calcium levels. He just seems satisfied being normal. So take a look at what's happening here. Even though we have completely normal amounts of calcium in the body, Bessie is still dumping excess amounts of calcium into the urine. So mysterious. This is called hypercalciuria with normal calcemia, and it's the most common metabolic abnormality underlying calcium stone formation. First place. There are a few possible mechanisms behind this. It's thought that most of these patients are absorbing an excessive amount of calcium from the gut. And instead of hanging out in the serum, this calcium is immediately excreted in the urine. This is called absorptive hypercalciuria. Think of the calcium traveling straight from the GI tract and into the urine. A less common abnormality may involve a defect in the proximal reabsorption of calcium in the kidney. This is called renal hypercalciuria. For some reason, the kidney just likes to leave a little more calcium behind in the urine. A third mechanism may involve a little excess calcium resorption from bone, called resorptive hypercalciuria. Remember, this calcium is getting immediately excreted and serum calcium levels stay normal. And that's usually it. When a patient comes to you with calcium oxalate stones, they are 1. most likely dehydrated, and two, probably excreting excess calcium in the urine even though their serum levels are normal. They just like to pee more calcium.